In this building, people are giving one of the most important things that anyone can give. They're giving their blood. This blood will help sick people get well. It'll save lives. It'll make possible this operation on the feet of a badly scalded little girl. Without a supply of the right blood, this couldn't be carried out. Nor could this, a complex heart operation which will restore active life to a man who might otherwise have lived only a few more years. This is the first of two films about blood, how it circulates around the body and why it's necessary for life. A big city. The life of a city depends upon its transport system. There are the important main highways. Other busy roads branch off them. And there are smaller streets where vehicles can pull in and load or unload. The city and its people have to be supplied with an enormous variety of things if they are to function properly. A modern city has to have an efficient transport network. And it's just the same if we consider that much more complicated and interesting organism, the living body. This shows part of the main transport network in the body of a newborn baby. These are the arteries transporting blood from the heart to every part of the body. To keep the blood flowing along all these arteries, there has to be a very efficient and reliable pump. And of course there is, the heart. Let's look at how the heart works. Blood coming from the lungs first enters this chamber, called the left atrium, while blood coming from the rest of the body enters the upper chamber on the other side, called the right atrium. There are valves between these two upper chambers and the larger chambers below. This chamber is called the left ventricle, and this is the right ventricle. When the valves open, blood flows from the two upper chambers into the two ventricles. The next thing that happens is that the muscular walls of the two ventricles contract, squeezing the blood through another pair of valves. Blood from the left ventricle flows out into the aorta, the main artery leading out of the heart to the rest of the body. From the right ventricle, it goes out along the pulmonary artery, back to the lungs. So there's a continual circulation of blood around the body, powered by the muscular contractions of the heart, our heartbeats. On this x-ray film, you can see the heart beating. Let's look at it directly. Here it is, a great bag of muscle driving blood around the living body. This simplified diagram shows what happens to the blood. The main artery branches out to different parts of the body. Wherever blood is needed by living tissue, there's a network of fine blood vessels called capillaries leading off from the arteries. Here's one. It's in these capillaries that the loading and unloading goes on, supplying the body with the things it needs and removing waste. The capillaries link the arteries with the veins, which take blood back to the heart, coming together into the main vein, which runs into the right atrium of the heart. Every part of the body needs its blood supply. The brain is perhaps the most important organ. Here's the system of arteries in the brain. These are connected through the capillaries to veins, not shown here, which carry the blood back to the heart. It's possible actually to see the circulation of the blood. The patient is having a test to examine the circulation to his brain. Blood doesn't show up in x-ray pictures, so a special substance is injected into the bloodstream which will show up. 
This special dye goes into his arm here. And there's the X-ray equipment. When the blood containing the dye reaches his neck and head, we'll be able to see it. We'll use this model head to show what we'll be looking at. First of all, shots taken here of this part of his neck and jaw and lower skull. There are the teeth seen using x-rays, and you can see the jawbone and the top of the spine. We can lose these bones, leaving a blank screen, until the blood containing the dye stuff appears, moving up through two important arteries into the brain. There it is, going up now. And down it comes again, through two main veins, back to the heart. Let's watch that again, the blood passing up into the brain, then out again. These pictures are deliberately slowed down. Now watch from the side. We'll be x-raying the brain through this side of the skull. We'll be looking at the section above the hand. Here, in slow motion, we can see the dyed blood entering the brain. Next, it will pass into the capillaries which supply the brain tissues. You can see the faint darkening caused by the dye. Now it flows out through this vein. And back down the neck to the heart. Finally, X-ray pictures taken through the top of the skull. Here are the orbits for the eyes on the model and on the X-ray. We'll lose the bones again. A computer does this for us. And here comes the dyed blood. Up two arteries into the brain. Here are the two halves of the cerebrum. The picture darkens as the dye gets into the capillaries, then goes lighter again as it passes into the veins and out of the brain. Watch again. You're seeing the actual circulation of blood through arteries, capillaries and veins in the living brain. Here are pieces of human artery and vein. The artery has thick muscular walls which are very elastic. Arteries have to accommodate the powerful surges of blood flowing from the heart. They help the blood flow by peristaltic action of the muscles in the walls. This causes the pulse you can feel when you gently press on the skin near an artery. Veins have thinner, less elastic walls with no muscles. They have simply to take the gentler blood flow out of the capillaries and back to the heart. Some important veins contain devices to stop the blood running back away from the heart. There are valves which will only allow flow in one direction, here from left to right. The valve would shut if the blood tried to reverse its flow. It can only travel in this direction. The more active you are, the more blood is needed to carry vital materials to the muscles and tissues. Sally will jog on this treadmill and we'll watch how her heart rate increases as she exerts herself. I'll just increase the incline. Little jog. That's good. Well done. The treadmill is tilted so that she's running uphill. Her heart rate, which was about 80 beats per minute, is increasing, as you can see. Good. A few minutes later. Now the rate's gone up even further. Well done, that's good. Coming down now, Sally. 
She's a healthy girl who takes plenty of exercise and her heart can cope quite easily. As you see, when the run's over, she's not at all distressed. You see, exercise isn't just to get your leg muscles or the muscles in your arms firm and strong. It helps keep the heart muscles fit. The muscles of your heart are at work throughout your life, and the stronger they are, the healthier you'll be. Well done. The muscles of the heart need a good blood supply to keep them going. The coronary arteries provide the fuel and oxygen and other materials the heart needs. If the blood supply through the arteries fails, you have what's called a coronary heart attack, and you could be in real trouble. Earlier on, we talked about a city's transport system. Roads need to be kept reasonably clear if traffic is to flow properly. Parked vehicles can slow things down. They can cause a complete jam. Traffic may come to a stop and important deliveries not be made. Suppose this motor car engine is the heart. It needs a constant supply of fuel, of petrol. If we squeeze the petrol pipe, the engine will stop. If you smoke and get overweight and don't exercise enough, the fuel pipes to the heart, the coronary arteries, can become thickened by fatty deposits inside them. This slows down the blood supply to the heart. The heart muscles find it more and more difficult to keep going. Eventually, the blockage can cause the heart to stop, like that car engine. This patient's heart's been stopped deliberately, but he's safe because he's connected to a heart-lung or bypass machine, which will keep his blood circulating while the surgeons deal with a faulty coronary artery. Mechanical pumps keep the blood surging through his body. He still needs oxygen, and this is bubbled through the blood, which carries it to where it's needed in his body, then returns for more. A vein has been removed from one of the patient's legs, and this is used to bypass the blocked section of coronary artery. The heart then receives a rich blood supply again. It's a skilled procedure, but works very well. There's the section of vein which replaces the faulty bit of artery. Of course, it's better if we never need to make use of these marvellous surgical skills. If you enjoy a proper diet, don't smoke and take plenty of exercise, you may never need to.